Hi everyone. Welcome to episode number 12, okay? <laughs> I'm all cattywampus here. <laughs> the, uh, this is my pylon coat. As you can see, with the pointed top, I look just like a pylon. <sighs> I just finished my morning walk. Temperature is uh, minus one degree C. By my math, um, in my frozen head, it's about uh, 30 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Now, what many of you do not know is that I come from a place called Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. There's a Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, um, right here, and it's cold there, okay? So minus one degree C is nothing compared to the type of weather that those folks get. I've seen minus 20, minus 25, and probably worse. Today's episode is number 12, and the subject is another tour of the boat. In the past, I've given a tour showing a lot of the housekeeping aspects. <clears throat> you know, where the beds are, what the kitchen looks like, what my t top cabin looks like, and that kind of stuff. And today we'll, we'll make a quick walkthrough showing the same things. And, but then I'll make a separate walkthrough with all of the deck plugs removed. All of them so you can look into the bilges and you can see all the mechanical systems that's what some folks have asked for you know, I'm a lucky guy because I have good health and freedom and I have friends all over this planet that I've met along the way so I'm a very blessed person and I'm thankful to be able to share this with you so cheers everyone and enjoy uh, today's episode number 12 thank you Okay, so I'm standing in the aftermost part of the boat, looking down and forward. That's facing forward. Shove the mast out of the boom out of the way. And the cockpit is quite large. You see a little bit of junk out here. Got some rags trying to dry. You know, and that hatch goes down to the dungeon, which we'll show later. And it's, yes, that's the cockpit, you know. As cockpits go on boats, it's enormous. You know, I can show you lots of other sailboats, and I would challenge that any boat. I don't think any boat out there could, could show as big a cockpit as this. I mean, we could dance here. You know, ladies could lay out in the sun. Two of them could lay out here easily. You know, huge boat. But let's go on inside, okay? This is my, my workshop, okay? And that's pretty typical for how it looks. Any jobs that may or may not be in progress, that's where the nerve center is, okay? But when I'm in port, when I'm kind of off duty and clean, this is where a lot of, this is where I entertain for tea. This is where I have guests. And uh, I, I throw the rug out when I'm done making a mess for the day. But underneath this area is the uh, where the engine is. So... Most people see the table, they see the chart table, they see the seats, and they say, oh, how nice, look at all this space, etc., etc." Very easy to forget to look down. See, this floor is almost 100% comprised of removable plugs. The one with the hole in it, that's removable. The plug before it, removable. You can see the handles on those two. And everything under the, floor, under the uh, rug is removable, including under the, uh, the the entry mat area. Okay, so you know, and the cr crazy thing is, it's very difficult to get all the deck plugs out at the same time. <laughs> if it wasn't raining, I could be putting them out in the cockpit, and that might be would work. So. I've popped off some of them, okay? And we'll get the rest of them after, okay? So again, you're looking back, you're looking down at the engine. I think we can take off all the fun. Ow! Ow! No bitch. This is a no bitch day. All right, so here we go. So we are facing aft. And I'm standing on the steps leading to the top cabin and you're looking at the engine okay so now 
we would do a quick tour. Okay, so this big red thing is an engine. It's an Iveco 115 horsepower straight six. Okay. And it's just a diesel. In fact, as diesels go, I like it because it's an older diesel and that means it's not fancy schmancy. There is no computer controls or anything like that. I'm not. Crikey, this will be difficult. So you can imagine the walking around gets pretty difficult when you've got all the floor plugs out. All right, so this is the engine. This is a coolant hose that is a thermostat under there. And that's the pipe as it exits the engine. And you can see it goes down, 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 down. And that pipe goes down and exits the boat. It just welds a hole right through the pipe, right through the hull. We've seen exterior pictures of the keel cooling system. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Okay, that's the hot engine coolant exiting the boat. The relatively cool engine coolant comes back into the boat here. And there's a pipe directly under that. Again, I'd have to go moving my darn light. This is gonna be pretty darn hard. Oh my God, I still have a diesel leak, shit. Well, shit ski. Okay, so in this area, this thing at the end of the pipe, this is the bulk diesel tank. It goes another, um, it's probably about a 24 inch tank, so front to back, top to bottom, almost 35 inches, I think, and it goes almost a full width of the boat, okay? How do we get fuel to the engine? So the, this is the pickup for the main, the bulk fuel tank. Fuel comes out of there into the, a paper filter and it runs through a manually controlled electric pump which pumps it through the black hose all the way to the back under the cockpit <clears throat> and there's a day tank there. Okay, let's go down the hole. Okay, so I'm, I've got my feet in the cockpit uh, dungeon, the locker below the cockpit, looking at the tank. So this is my day tank, 102 liters, no damn level gauge, which pisses me off, but that's okay. Um, and it's got the fuel hoses, okay? So generally, this is a stick I use to dip the tank if I just want to see how much fuel is in there. So you got the fuel from the transfer pump. That fitting leaks, I have to fix that still. You got the return line from the injectors and you got the one that goes to the engine, okay? Three hoses. That's kind of standard stuff. The fuel exits the day tank and comes back into the boat via that line into the water oil separators and it goes down to the bottom of the engine and does its thing okay and it uh, the diesel does have you know uh, engine mounted filters as well and there's an injector pump somewhere down there and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> this thing here this device is a hand pump you pump up and down to help bleed to move fuel to let you bleed the system this diesel does not have any decompression valves at the top of each cylinder like my other engines have had in the past. I've always had Yanmar engines and Yanmars have a decompression valve at the top which allows you to crank it easily with the battery to uh, move fuel to bleed out the bubbles. This thing down here looks like a fill but it's not. This is a dipstick. Took me a while to figure that one out. This diesel has all the other normal pieces, except this thing here was new to me. That's a pump. Okay. That is a pump, and it's used. that's how you pump the uh, old oil out of the engine when you want to change in the oil. Pretty spiff. Okay, facing aft from the diesel, you got this thing. What the hell is that, right? That is a pump, just like a screw type grease gun is what it is, okay? And it manually pumps grease into what we call the stern tube. Now the stern tube is just a big carbon steel metal pipe 
and on the inside of it is the propeller shaft. So the propeller shaft, very little of it is actually exposed. That is the only part of the propeller shaft that you can that actually you can see from that's where it enters the packing and this all rotates this is a thrust bearing and it goes to the engine and that's the only part you'll see moving so there is the packing gland I call it packing gland follower whatever you want to call it I don't give a shit and you can adjust with the bolts you know a, a turn a flat or two to adjust how much water can leak in and I think that's it for the powertrain boys and girls yeah so the rub is when you're trying to do work let's say on the engine and you have to get access to these floor panels you have very good access to the engine once the panels are removed but look at everything else I mean you got I have stuffed my table over there got the floor plug stacked up in different places down I have to toss anything that was on the table over here on the chart table and it really it becomes tedious when you're constantly having to move stuff in order to gain access to, to places so but that's uh life on a boat that's just the way it is can imagine me pulling cables. <laughs> So I showed you all that because it, it is a bit of a pain in the ass <laughs> to move all, the shit, all this stuff around. So with the plugs out, now you can see, again, my 24 volt charger, my 12 volt charger, and the 12 volt battery system. Again, I have four batteries in the boat. They're all brand new AGM batteries. Um, and these two are wired in parallel to make a 12 volt system and again we're under the helm station and that's convenient because a lot of the the 12 volt panel is under here so that's kind of like duh right this is a water tank on the port side there's another one just like it on the starboard side over here is a water potable water system pretty much all of it that's the primary potable water pump this is a pump that needs to be physically abandoned. It's already determinated electrically and mechanically by the previous owner. And I think I know now why he did not bother to remove it because it's going to be a chore to get it out. That looks like two beers and a nice warm anchorage and I'll go get that out. This has got the accumulator you know, that some people have in their household system. So not rocket science here. This is the water heater. Okay. Now, we're here to take a look at the area under the galley. So you've seen me pull up the plugs. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a gray water system. The large diameter hoses here and there and there, they come from the three places that water the, the drains from. So one is the, up here you got a bathroom sink that has a drain. You have a shower that has a drain. They are these two hoses. And over here, you have a kitchen sink that drains. Okay, And it's as simple as that. So this is just gravity drain, and it goes into the gray water tank, which is 16 liters big. That's the level switch. And there's a pump. And it's as simple as that. You know, level goes, it gets too high, the pump kicks on and pumps out. I know we discussed in the past over here, yeah, and over here, of course, is the, um, the anti-siphon event. So this comes from the pump here, and this goes through the anti-siphon. That's a small vent on the top, and it goes from there down to the overboard, which and it pumps out of the boat. Oh my goodness! Cats and dogs living together. Oh, okay, so. 
thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sitting in the sun, which is rare, and I'm sitting on somebody else's boat, which is rare. Next episode will be lessons learned. Okay, so I spent four months since I've been here, and there's a lot of things I've learned. Okay, and I I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of little piddly things. I mean, certainly I've learned how to use two-part epoxy paints better than I did before. Right, I've learned lots of other things, and uh, but. And I'm not going to go into a detailed list of, you know, what would be my dream boat and what are all the things wrong with this boat. I'm not going to worry about what's wrong with my current boat. I know some things about my boat that I don't like. I know some things that I do like. I know that if, um, if circumstances got to the point where I had to change boats, I know what I would look for differently in the future. But for the moment, I'm pretty darn happy with my boat. It's a great liveaboard boat. I'm sure it will... I'm sure it will sail. It will never sail quickly, but I think I can make it move, and I'm eager to get out there on the Firth and uh, make that happen. As far as trying to restore it to perfection, we're just not going to go there. I mean, and that may be a surprise to people who knew me 20 years ago. Because so, what would Captain Ron would say? He said, "Well, all boats got problems, boss. You know." He says, "Don't worry about it." You know, and I, and I think that's exactly the way to take it with an old boat. Don't try to make it perfect. Just make it safe to get underway and then get underway and go. And that's really what we're eager to do. So next time, lessons learned. Take care, everyone. Bye.